All right, and we are going live. Yep, that's it. We're live. All right, hello, everybody. Um, on the east coast of the U.S., it is 10 a.m. We don't normally do podcasts at this hour, but uh, if anybody's awake, um, you'll enjoy this live, but most of you are probably going to enjoy this later on in the day. Uh, anyhow, uh, welcome to the Commando Blog podcast. My name is Don. And I'm here with my co-host, Not ETF. Hello. Today and we're, uh, full yeah. weird. Today we're uh, here introducing Mr. Uh, Strelka to his first podcast. He uh, works at an Australian gun shop and is here to go ahead and tell us about uh, Australian firearms and the culture around them. Hey, hey, people. How's it going? Hey there, Strelka. Uh, again, thank you very much for coming on to the uh, stream here. Uh, we do have a lot of questions, and I'm sure there's a lot to talk about regarding Australia. Uh, it's gun culture, gun history, gun laws, and beyond that. Uh, of course, uh, we did have a, a list of topics that we talked about, um, kind of the, to get us start off here, like kind of like a, an icebreaker of sorts. And I'm opening that list now. But uh, in the meantime, of course, we don't want to dox you or anything. But what's the what's the general province that you uh, you live in in Australia right now? Okay, I live to the west of Sydney, um, so I would imagine that everyone knows Sydney, um, biggest state capital in Australia. Um, I live in the western suburbs there, and yeah, one of twenty five million Australians. <laughs> It is a very big country. There are a lot of Australians, <laughs> a lot of shit posters. It's a very good thing. It's a great yes, title <laughs> to have. The uh, finest shit poster to have. The finest. Only the finest. Uh, so, I guess the, the main question everybody has when they meet... Well, not everybody, but people of, of uh, our uh, culture that we, we all... Um, uh, have come to uh, integrate ourselves into, uh, and that would be with firearms and uh, related topics. When they hear Australia, they think, oh man, you guys have it really bad. Like, you have in extreme gun laws. In fact, some of uh, um, us here in the U.S. believe you can't own any guns in Australia. Uh, do Australia, you want to say. You can own guns yeah. in Australia? I thought they banned everything. Yeah, I thought it was upside down land. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah do you mind. <laughs> Do you mind uh, expanding upon uh, what exactly is legal there, the classifications of firearms, and um, w what exactly is the average gun owner of Australia? Yeah, so um, the too long didn't read version is shit's fucked, please send help. <laughs> um, the long version is please God, we're dying, please send help. Um, Off to a okay. great start. <laughs> okay, so basically, um, you, you you can own firearms. Um, we do have large pest problems in Australia that do need to be solved. Um, so most yeah, but everything of... wants to kill you, right? Yes. Let's just walk outside um, two steps, and there's just like a new animal that has never been discovered before. It's like spitting acid through its tail or something to you. Yeah, 25 meter tall kangaroo just walks up to you and you're like, oh god, what's going on? Um, but yes, you can, of course, own firearms. There are steps to get through, hurdles to jump. Um, most of it is um, bolt actions and stuff of that realm. Um, sporting shotguns. Um, of course, semi-autos and all that are hard to get. Um but, you know, it's bad, but it's not bad in some ways. So you guys have a licensing system, and I'm guessing you guys also have, like, a tier system. Like, okay, so you can, there's different tiers, and depending on sort of what you do, you can get, you know, access to those guns? Yes, so there's what's called the categories. Um, so your main, most common categories are A and B. So A category is for rim fires and most shotguns. So um, no, rim fires and air rifles, excluding semi-automatic rim fires. Um, so, you know, normal bolt action, lever action, um, rim fires, 
than any basically any air rifle. Nobody really cares about air rifles here, so you're fine. Um, and then shotguns you, in that category, you can get over unders, side by sides, straight pulls, um, not lever actions in New South Wales. That is a separate category. That is in B category. And then B category moves into your more hunting stuff. So your center fire, bolt actions, lever actions, um, and your pump action rifles um, and the lever action shotguns. And then we get into um, category C and D, which is your restricted stuff, your semi-autos, your pump action shotguns, stuff like that. So a pump action rifle is easier to get than a pump action shotgun, correct? Yes. Are there any mag restrictions? Like you, you mentioned before, like rim fires, not some auto, but you know, just yeah. rim fires and bolt ice um, and all that stuff. Basically, um, we are capped to 10 rounds on um, center fires. With rim fires, we are capped to 15. Yeah, so about a universal standard there like the 10 or 15 rounds like uh mag yeah. capacity kind of thing around the u.s and other parts of the world it seems that that's like the magic number that anti-gun folk and uh, politicians like to use is oh 10 and 15 that should that should be enough of course in yeah. other places it's five um or even less uh but uh even where i live yeah. uh, it's it's technically 10 for for all uh, rounds for magazines in, in New York. Uh, but for you even, uh, you know, for Rimfire, uh, 15, wow, it's like Australia actually has something better than us in a way. <laughs> it's kind of funny to think it, about. There is a caveat with that, um, and it's recently come into effect. You can no longer import 15-round magazines uh, to sell for the A category. So it's fine if you own it, um, there's no restrictions with that, but you just can't import them. And currently there's no domestic maker for 15 round rimfire magazines. So we're kind of stuck at the moment. Oof. So yeah, if any enterprising Australian company wants to start making 15 rounders, then go straight ahead. Uh, the market, there's a new market there. Yeah. It's very true. And if, uh, Gun companies and the industry in general uh, knows anything. Uh, they know how to innovate and get around uh, that kind of a shitty situation and uh, yeah. create something for the market. Capitalism will guide us. <laughs> yeah. I got a question. So you all this, you mentioned like long guns. Are there any like special things on pistol? Are pistols or and revolvers like allowed or not allowed? Yes, um, they are there. Special on them? They are their own category. Um, they are uh, H category, handgun, nice and easy. Um, there's a few more hoops to jump through with that. Um, same thing with handgun. We are capped to 10 rounds for our semi-autos. Um, revolvers, obviously, are going to be six or five shot. Um, and then there's barrel length restrictions. Um, in New South Wales, we have magazine type restrictions. So... If a magazine is crimped or pinned or something like that, it's actually illegal in New South Wales. Um, it needs to have a physical block in the bottom of the magazine to make it physically 10 rounds because the government fears that we'll just drill out the crimp or something like that, which is something I totally wouldn't do. No, no. We, we, we obviously could never encourage our viewers to... Definitely, you know, don't look up on YouTube guides and like on the internet on GitHub. You know, don't look up guides how to like drill through them. It's very easy too. So God, God forbid you are to, uh, you know, challenge the state in this regard. So no, don't, don't look online for tutorials. Know how easy it is. Very yes, subtle. Yes, we only drill through the crimp holes in Minecraft, not in real <laughs> yes, life. Yes, always do it in my Mine Download Minecraft mods. Don't do it in real life. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> oh boy. Uh so in this episode of the Commando Blog podcast, the guest gets rated by the AFP. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, a new flavor of authority. Thankfully, uh, 
My dogs are already Is dead. Is that a oh. real og? <laughs> oh. <gets kicked. laughs> yeah, so we went over a little Thank bit of the uh, the legal and illegal classification stuff. Um, yes. With Australia. I mean, there's so much more, but unless you want to talk about legal shit for the next 45 hours. Oh, I bet. Um, <laughs> I think we, we got the general gist. Obviously, you know, stuff yeah. like full autos and whatever. Just... Yeah, forget full it. Full autos? No, oh, what? Well, there is uh, one important question that I feel needs to be asked in relation to this. Is so because you mentioned before, like you know, the H license and some of the more like hard to get, like semi autos license. How easy it is for? Like, let's say I'm just like John Australian. I shit post on the internet all day, and I got a job like milking emus or whatever. <laughs> so yeah, I want to go ahead and I want to get myself a. Fucking Glock 19 and a semi. I mean, it has to be pinned, but whatever. A Glock 19 pinned to 10 rounds and a, a semi automatic shot. Can I do okay. that? So, or like, you can. You is would it have to possible go for the... me to get that license? Yes. So, you would have to um, go through the loopholes for the handgun license. Um, and then you would need to go through the loopholes for the C category license and that's how you get your semi-auto shoddy um for C category you can get it on medical reasons and this is where people are going to get triggered at the Australian government um you can get a semi-automatic shotgun and semi-automatic rim fire for medical reasons because the Australian government says that those guns do not recoil huh what? I'm just going to let that sink in. Wow. I mean, uh, I sort of get it, right? Because, you know, a semi-auto has less rate, but... I do not care what shotgun it is. If you are dumping five rounds of nine pellet, that bitch is going to recoil. It mm. is. It absolutely is. There is a person that... Yet again, I'm... we see the vast and incredible intelligence of, like, anti-gun politicians just shining through. Yes. There's a man that I know who got a C category um, license because he had... Uh, I'm just trying to think of the word. Um, he had some problem with his teeth, and the recoil in his shotguns um, was a good enough excuse to get him a C category license. Wow. Braces, that's the word I'm looking I'm looking for, sorry. He had braces, and apparently shooting normal shotguns was enough pain to him that it required a C-category license and semi-automatic shotguns. I mean, if you're a gun owner, that's one hell of a good incentive to go ahead and, like, get yourself some good teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, and he kept his... um. C category license after he got his braces out, so very interesting. Yeah, that. Yeah, incredibly peculiar. Okay. So, yeah. and you can get um, full autos and all that. That is another right. license. That is a um, armorer's license or a theatrical armorer's license, um, and that's when you're dealing with movies. TV shows, shit like that. Um, and they themselves have their special import permits. Um, I talked to a theatrical armourer who was doing something, I forget what it was for, but he could only order in Ukrainian um, Comblock stuff because, funnily enough, the Soviet stuff, uh, not the Soviet, the Russian stuff is banned in Australia. So he can get like AK 74s, PKMs, and all that need to be ukrainian not russian that's so weird yes well it's all because of the whole donbass situation that that came about oh gotcha so it so it's just a little bit above arbitrary or like or, okay there, there we have a some sort of a reason here but it's not exactly a reason to yeah it seems that way um, all over the place yeah yeah a lot of nato countries did that yeah. So, so it isn't a situation similar to the U.S. where, um, where like gun shops or S like a uh, basically FFLs that try to go and get like their SOT and all that stuff. Where uh, for Australia, it's like you simply just 
a person or individual goes and gets this theatrical uh, or uh, yes. collector's and or then, display license of sorts. Yeah, then it, it depends. There's two ways of going about it. There's like a brick and mortar shop or there's like how you guys have it in the States where you have home dealers. Um, oh, okay. And we have home dealers here. It's just that you need to have a safe room that meets standards. Um, so, you know, internal room, no windows, um, bricked uh, walls. Um, it varies from state to state. So I'm just going off New South Wales here. So if you're in another state, please don't crucify me. Um, and sometimes you need a um, actual steel wall. It, it all varies and from jurisdiction, jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Right, understandably. Um, and I guess the follow-up question that I wanted to ask uh, related to this was, how did it get to this point? How have things changed over the course of Australia's history and uh, gun culture, gun laws, to get to uh, now, 2020? Um, well, really, it was... It, it all really got bad in 96. Right. That's when um, Martin Bryant um, shot up the Arrowhead Cafe in Tasmania, down in Port Arthur, killed all those people. John Howard bitched out um, and decided to ban inanimate objects instead of dealing with mental health and all that fun stuff because we all know that it's the, anim it's the inanimate object's fault that a mass shooting happened, not the mentally ill person pulling the trigger. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And Martin Bryant was certainly mentally ill. Definitely. And did, adjacently to that, did they even uh, do anything about uh, mental illness after that? Were they campaigning or at least doing anything no, worthwhile? No, no nothing whatsoever. Was, they just thought guns, it that's it. All straight to the, um, to the guns. And this is where we get into trouble um, with trusting the Australian government. Um, a inquest was done, which is a basically government-led um, investigation into the shooting um, and all that. Very prim, proper, very official, blah, blah, blah. Um, findings all came down. Uh, John Howard's government, who was in charge at that time, blocked the inquest from going public. We, the Australian public, do not know what the inquest found. Some small things did get leaked, but we do not know the over, overwhelming majority of what was found during the inquest. One of the major things that was found was that um, the AR-15 that Martin Bryant used was actually said to be destroyed by either the Victorian or South Australian police a few years earlier. Um, and obviously, that wasn't the case. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, so, that's like, a major already, issue. the gun laws that they had at play, you know, <clears throat> clearly the, the failed laws. at going ahead and yes. stopping them. <clears throat> the gun laws that were already in motion should have not allowed Martin Bryant to own a gun and got to the stage where he walked into Arrowhead, into the Arrowhead Cafe. Um, so it was just a failure by the government, a failure by the police, a failure on many levels. And of course, the government and the police aren't going to point the fingers at themselves and say, we fucked up. Oh, no, of course not. So, of course, they, uh, they bring the law-abiding going on of Australia into this and punish them uh, for yes. something they did not do and uh, for something that could not have been stopped with stuff that was already on the books and whatever was on the books afterward. It would not have uh, done very much to stop that. And uh, that's unfortunate because that seems to be a thing that's happening all over the place, even here in the U.S. Um, it's, it's the same tune every single time. Uh, and it almost seems like there's very little we can do about it. Of course, uh, the U.S.'s uh, main line of defense we have here is uh, is uh, the federal 
uh, laws that are in place and even state laws that are in place, aside from the Constitution, of course, which very uh, few politicians care about as deeply um, as they probably should, they should on the matter. Uh, but yes, exactly. that. With other countries where firearms are seen as a privilege rather than a right, uh, it's very easy for these things to um, happen, uh, especially if gun owners are a... Um, or even larger minority, uh, larger minority, it almost doesn't make sense to say that, but you know what I mean. Uh, that's very unfortunate. So I, I feel bad about that, of course, all the time. Every now and then I, I think about places like uh, the UK, Australia, uh, and now even New Zealand has had its share of, um, of knocking down to... Uh, uh, yeah, upping its restrictions. Bouncing laws that, you know, wouldn't have even actually stop the thing either yeah. right in new zealand is going to turn out to be interesting i'll tell you that much um right i will say this to all the commandos out there don't give up on new zealand yeah our kiwi bros um, dude, fucking because... canadians too are getting screwed over yet again yeah the, the poor canadians not even being able to own boys yeah. so the whole Ripperini. Dude, they've had a single, like, on the list, if you actually have the time, I 100% suggest you go out and do it. Like, on all the oh, guns that they banned, it's just, they ban a fucking single-shot pistol. Hey, they banned coffee. What? They ban, they banned a coffee website. They, they banned coffee because they banned, you know, Black Rifle coffee. But it was they like, you know, they, they, this is the argument, right? It's like, oh, because, you know, they banned their lower, right? And like, okay, sure, but even if you say that, right, why would you ban a single-shot fucking pistol, right? Yeah, it's um, from the makers of We Banned the G11. It's just, yeah, politicians are assholes. If if you guys didn't know already, <laughs> yeah, I can tell you right now. Uh, if you got a oh a Berman Supreme, like on Twitter, said it fucking best. If your politician is not like downright, if your politician of choice is not downright going ahead and saying, hey, uh. You know, repeal the NFA, get rid of all this bullshit laws, then he's not pro gun, right? He's just gonna, like, let them erode maybe a little bit slower, but it's still gonna let them erode. Right. If and your it, politician doesn't allow you to legally make homemade open bolt submachine guns, he's just not pro 2A enough for me. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, it's it's funny because, uh, you know, the average person will look at that and say, oh, that is very extreme. That is very extreme. That's, that can't be uh, an average thought. Like, you, you know, logically, you cannot be that way. And it, but you just look at it uh, a bit closer and think about it. Um, the so-called pro-gun politicians, uh, even here in the U.S., th they have even passed gun laws or they have supported uh, more gun laws. And uh, yes. in my opinion, or it should actually be honestly a fact if you're supporting uh even the tiniest extra restriction on um on gun rights then you're just you're simply not pro gun i'm sorry like you might be way less anti gun than uh someone who's uh trying to uh go all out and and ban a bunch of stuff but even if you're looking to go and uh, let's say restrict the magazine from 30 rounds to 29 rounds, like no, that doesn't make you pro-gun uh, just because you're less anti-gun. No, a pro-gun per person means um, I wouldn't even say keeping things the status quo. No, actually moving back a bit and repealing restrictions, uh, especially unnecessary restrictions. And I think many of us agree with that already. It, it seems to be the right choice, but a lot of people. Um, uh, either misguided, a little bit ignorant about the laws, or they have they hold their own personal convictions, which I can't necessarily fault them for at face value. But uh, it involves a very lo long and drawn out conversation about the topic. And uh, even Colin Noir has said that like it's very hard to get your point across in like a seven minute bit or something, which is very often the case. You you, you don't get it, uh, very often to sit down in front of someone and have a cool level headed talk with someone on the other side. Um, and it, it seems, unfortunately, these days, uh, people are going farther and farther apart on both sides that having a, uh, conversation about it is just not possible, unfortunately. Yeah, there's a really good saying, which is like, tact is the way, I can remember, tact is the way to present a point without making an enemy. I feel like that's something really important 
to go ahead and keep in mind the firearms community in order to like you know be able to uh again we're we're fighting we're, we're fighting here right because we, we weren't fighting for like rights firearms rights and hope because we believe people should be able to own basically whatever the fuck they want right and to defend themselves and and you know defend themselves huh do whatever the fuck they want with it right as long as they're not injuring other people you know then, it, then it's fine right and and it is, you know, I, I feel like a, a big part of that comes, like, you know, from the inside. I've seen, like, you know, friends and family, like, people where you can, like, sit down, have a conversation with, and especially people who are, like, on the middle. Because, sure, there's times where, like, you like, you have, like, that one uncle or whatever that's, like, he's staunchly anti-gun, and it's, like, it's hard, really, really difficult to even, like, break through a little bit on it. but. You know, you know, people who are like fence sitting, sort of. I feel like that is very important for like gun owners or whatever. Just sit down, have a nice, call. like they're family, right? They're family, right. friends. You can sit down, you can chat. You're way more likely to uh, get on the same level with someone who's uh, on the fence about it, and you don't want to, uh, like, how do I put it? You don't want to brainwash them. It's not the the goal. What you're trying to do is you're trying to explain the facts to them and let them find out for themselves. Uh, what they think on it, because they they honestly don't know. They're on the fence. They they don't have enough information to uh, conclude uh, how, what they what they feel about it. Uh, I just wanted to uh, change the topic a little bit here, based off comment we just got on the chat. Uh, Captain Medic says, um, "What? How is semi-auto not hard to get?" Quote. Um, do you want to expand upon that? Like, I'm sure it's more of something you have to expand upon uh, there. I don't, I don't know if he was talking about Australia or about something else. Uh, go ahead and explain. So semis are hard to get. They are harder than your normal license, more ropes to jump through, more time, more paperwork, more waiting around and waiting for the government to get off their ass and do their job. Um, so it, it just depends on what semis you're going for. If you're going for the C category, which is the rim fires and the semi-auto shotguns, um, then that is somewhat easy to get, or I should say easier to get. Right, in relativity, um, of course. Yes, yes, it's all in relativity. Um, but if you're going for the D category, which is the one that everyone wants, that's when you can get the fun stuff, your ARs, your... FNs and all that good stuff, um, then that is reserved for what they call professional hunters. That is when your job is to go onto people's property and professionally cull pest animals. And that requires you owning your own business and stuff like that. Right. Okay. That, yeah, that's actually a very good uh, explanation there. Um, because I'm sure that's something you wanted to talk about, but you wanted to keep it sort of generalized, and that's great because we can go yeah. back on it and and uh, explain the, the 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 details of of uh, the generalized answer. Uh, so I appreciate that comment. Um, I guess that that also made me think about uh, something um, that I forgot to ask earlier. Uh, kind of mixed with like the gun laws and the culture itself is uh, shooting itself. So. Are there, you can only shoot at dedicated ranges? Are you allowed to shoot on on private property or or are there is there even like public or national f quote forests? Even though it's you know exactly ha have um, like a lot of those maybe I don't really know the geography of Australia very well, so I'm not sure exactly uh, what surrounds that ability to shoot either outdoors, indoors. Like how does that work? Yes, yeah, so there are several ranges in the Sydney Basin. Um, where you can go to indoor, outdoor, there's several. Go there, shoot rifle, shoot shotgun, shoot pistol, go for broke. Um, on private property, you're allowed to hunt, you're allowed to do all of that. And the rule of thumb that I always give to, um, customers is what happens on private property stays on private property. Private property is like Vegas. I ain't going <laughs> to snitch. Um... And then when it comes to state forests and all that, you need to go through a specific course to be able to hunt in state forests. You can't do recreational shooting. It is purely for hunting and 
pest control type stuff. So it's not like you can pull a um, Paul Harrell where you can set up some targets, shoot some stuff, make a video, um, and do stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, I, I didn't know about any of that. So that that's new info to me. That's... Uh in a way be- better than some states here uh in terms of being able to um uh shoot either recre- recreationally or shoots uh, strictly for um for pest control and whatnot uh it, it seems some like at face value like okay somewhat reasonable for an uh a somewhat anti-gun country uh, of course um though uh, when it comes to say the outdoor shooting aspect though uh, like at outdoor ranges. Now, uh, would you say that there are way more indoor ranges than outdoor ranges, or would you say it's about the same? Are there more outdoor ranges? There are more outdoor ranges purely okay. because they are easier. Um, really? And you can stretch your legs out. The three indoor ranges that I know of, they all cap out at 50 meters. Oh, so, right. There's only so much work you can do at 50 meters. Um, for handguns and all that, yeah, perfect. Um, but for rifle, you know, you can really only just uh, do a quick sighting, shoot your rim fires. You know, it's not perfect. Right. Outdoor ranges are where you can have your fun, and outdoor ranges are the places that I despise. Oh, really? Um, because of the people who run the outdoor ranges. Oh. That's so unfortunate because I love outdoor ranges. I, I way prefer yes. outdoor than indoor, but if the outdoor range is being supervised or being run by someone that's absolutely terrible, that's like having someone, uh, pardon my French, shit on your ice cream or something, you know? That's terrible. Yes, the, um, the outdoor ranges around the Sydney Basin, in and around the Sydney Basin, are run by the Australian version of FUDs. These these are the men who do what's called F class and fly shooting. They are bench rest shooters, and they will only accept bench rest style of shooting. If you rock up with your hunting rifle just to do a general zero, get ready to um, get ready for a hunting trip and all that, they will talk shit to you. They will talk about how you need a bench gun, even though you're going hunting, you know, there, there's no reason to lugging around a 10 kilo gun. Um, they are just crotchety old men who I cannot wait for them to all die. So I can finally have fun. at the outdoor <laughs> ranges. Uh, which actually does bring us to another point. Uh, do you feel that the, the youth uh, in, in guns uh, and getting into guns in Australia, uh, I'm not sure how many are, if it's becoming a bigger thing, if it's getting a smaller, section of the subculture bigger and bigger okay um so you think that the young people are gonna start um making things a little bit better in terms of uh like ranges yeah. maybe in, well just in general i think i think okay. a lot of young people regardless of the political spectrum whether you're right left in between it doesn't fucking matter if you're a nazi or a communist you hate the australian government um in this generation, Let's it's just disenfranchised. Let's celebrate what all. Fuck politicians. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, you know, I have friends who are all over the political spectrum. I have the literal reincarnation of Adolf Hitler on my friends list, and I have dirty <laughs> communists. Um, they are dirty communists, and they should be thrown out of a helicopter, but fuck, they're nice people. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, and they are all... They may not be the most pro-gun people out there, but they don't scream at me for, you know, going hunting, owning guns and all that. Um, And again, like the shooting population of Australia, you know, they're they're all over the um, political spectrum. All right, understandably so. So you've got a lot of different... um, Even Australia has... You have more political parties than we do, possibly, right? I, I think that's true. Is that not true? Yes and no. Um, we have the two main ones, and they are the ones that we are stuck with. Oh. Um, so the way that the voting happens is 
there's the two main parties, Liberal and Labor. Um, you vote for one of those, and then there's a separate voting for the other parties. Um, so no matter what happens, one of those two parties are going to be in control. Oh my goodness. System. So it, it's a forced so, two-party system, no matter what, even if things yes, allow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So like, at, at least with your Americans, even though it's unlikely, if you all go, you know what, voting vermin supreme, let's go. Vermin supreme is all of a sudden the president. Here in Australia, it doesn't matter. We're getting one of the two parties. Right. He would have to be one or the other. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's, so a little, it, of course, concerning from someone on the outside learning that just now, but like that's kind of a wow. Uh, yes. Um, and that is causing a cesspool situation of even though they're two different political parties, they both want the same thing and they're just doing political point scoring and just we're doing this and then yeah that they just both want the same thing um, right there are some differences but yes and that's what call is causing the disenfranchisation with the population it's just like you're both the same evil you know right um, exactly uh I, I we did get some more um chatter in the in the side chat there um if i did send you a a screenshot to your discord i don't know if you could see it in your dms mm -hmm. uh but uh um i'm not sure about this stuff. i don't really know much about um again australia i'm, I'm learning most of this stuff from you uh uh do have a little bit of dissenting opinion or or possibly like what was explained earlier maybe you can uh either expand upon or possibly um you know clarify say oh a clarify bit. a little bit better uh if you feel like it uh based off of what they said yep that that sounds about right i will say again um each state does their own thing um as far as i know in new south wales um if you have a medical reason you can still get um a and b license as well as your C license that may vary in different states um you know western australia south australia northern territory they can all do their own things um but at least in new south wales i believe you can have a b c license if if the c license is medical um so yeah uh, right and that again, does apply to whether or not it's manual action or not a manual action then okay yeah <clears throat> oh, understandable cool. but yeah reading the legislation and talking to the people at the firearms registry um the whole not recoiling thing is a legitimate written down thing um at least in new south wales other states again do their own thing right uh, I guess the next topic I wanted to jump into, and it was one that I was, uh, uh, very interested to know because I, I know a little bit about what, uh, Australians own as far as some basic firearms that, uh, uh, that they have. I see it on threads sometimes and post it around like, oh, you know, check out this, I got this. And, uh, what would you say are the top five firearms that the average Australian gun owner has in their collection? If they even have that many. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> Don't underestimate us. Um, <laughs> as far as um, long guns go, we'll, we'll skip pistols because that just gets too hard because there's too many options. True. Um, obviously, bolt guns are queen here. Um, so the most popular brands are Ticker, Hauer, um, Lithgow is a pretty popular Remingtons are starting to die off in popularity just because Remington is shit now. Yeah. Um, and then you get into your shotguns. Shotguns are all over the place. Some people love um, over-unders, side-by-sides. We are starting to see a rise of um, lever actions and straight pulls now. So they're coming to prominence. And then, you know, old reliables, you know, old 303s and stuff like that. Uh, everyone's got a 303, basically. Oh, damn. Uh, yeah, with the uh, the 
the firearm brands that you mentioned, uh, I kind of, like, in a way, I kind of put two and two together. Um, uh, like you said, I think one of them, uh, Hawa, the Japanese bolt actions and, yes. and shotguns, like they make, uh, I kind of expected that to kind of be a thing because, you know, same general, like, like close in region, you know, like, okay, you have Japan's right there, Australia's right there. Why not have, um, those available in the U S you do have some of the same options, although it's weird. Uh, a lot of the European and, uh, Asia and, um, and Australian, um, if there are uh, Australian firearms manufacturers or companies, firearm companies, we don't really get a ton of those here. Like they don't really export to here. That's maybe not worth their time. Perhaps I don't know the logistics of the matter, but, uh, we often don't get the same, um, types of firearms coming over because we already have kind of maybe a saturated or abundance market on yeah. uh, bolt actions and, and certain shotguns that are more so meant for the more restrictive countries perhaps uh that's just uh, my gut feeling on the matter but uh it's something that i i kind of noticed and i, I do try to search out uh some of these restrictive countries the the culture and maybe like a youtube channel or a blog that that uh uh, someone has that that covers their life living in, say, Australia or Japan, and uh, how they how they do firearms. Um, I can't think of his name right now, but there's a great Japanese uh, uh, channel, uh, like a hunter. He like, he hunts and he actually uh, does a lot of stuff. He like does knife reviews. He does uh, occasional gun review, and and he shows himself camping sometimes, doing even airsoft. Basically, the extent of what you're allowed to do in Japan. Um, and and I just find that stuff fascinating. I, I love uh, learning about how uh, other cultures deal with that and, and what their their lifestyle is like connected to either firearms or the outdoors. Yeah, and I have talked to some people in the industry who look to get into the American market. And the main problem with the American market is Americans are loyal to American brands. Now, that's fine when American brands make good products. Right. But when it's fucking Remington and Mossberg, um, yeah, just buy a ticker or buy a hour, please, people. Right. That actually completely reminded me of the fact that there could possibly be an import law that's restricting them even. I didn't even think about that. I should have thought about that when I, when I was talking about it. But I wouldn't be surprised if there was, or even the other things I said, like saturation or, or you know, the American companies favoring each other. And that's why even you've had some instances where um, American companies, uh, firearm manufacturers, firearm companies almost might as well have supported some import bans uh, happening because they yeah. don't want that competition from from companies that make better versions of what they make like remington going downhill so yes well as far as i know like sporting or you know sporting with air quotes um rifles like with normal bolt guns and all that um it's i can't see a import ban or anything like that like there would be an assault weapons ban because it's a bloody bolt action rifle um Nobody's ring in the state said bolt action rifles. Um, uh, we got a question in the chat that is. Uh, oh, that's fine. Um, yep. Um, oh, yeah, it was related to the I've prior. Never heard about how the gun. Oh, what's her? I was just saying it's related to a prior uh, topic that oh, we can go back to it if you want, but um, I sent him the. Uh, yeah, just to answer it yeah. quick. Um, yeah, sure. I actually know about this. Um, it is called when you want a gun destroyed, something like that. Now you surrender a firearm. It's called being disposed of. Um, what happens with that is you either bring it, bring the firearm into a dealer or a police station. Um, if it's registered, you do the registration papers that you get the firearm. Um, yeah, fill it all out, blah, 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 all on the up and up. If it's not registered and it's like a found thing and you're just like, oh, I found it in the attic, blah, 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 um, just toss it. We um, book it in, police station does the same thing, and then it gets sent off to be destroyed, disposed. Um, if it gets sprung into a gun shop and it's something that can be sold, registered, something like that, um, most of the time, um, 
we just get it registered, put it on the second hand rack. Um, if it goes to the police station, obviously they have no interest in selling firearms. Um, so most of the time they will be destroyed somehow. I'm not sure on the way that the police destroy their firearms. All I know is that they do. Um, yeah. Hmm. That's so sad because whenever uh, I happen across maybe an image online of guns being destroyed, I just think, oh, there's there's such a good chance that that's Australia right there. And they're showing possibly images yeah. from 10 or 20 years ago plus. Uh, but it just, yeah. oh, like it sucks because so many guns were destroyed. Um, and, and there was yeah. many more that weren't. I true, will remind true. everyone of that. It's the Australian government that, that, that are cucks, know, not the Australian people. Yes, that, that is something that, sh- that should be said. And uh, yes, I, I really um, do appreciate the knowledge that um, even here, like gu- guns are becoming kind of more, I don't know how to put it, accepted maybe is the right word amongst the youth, like more interested in yeah. firearms, looking to actually expand uh, upon that. Although, of course, uh, people say, oh, no, the firearms ownership is going down in the U.S. Uh, well, th- there are a few statistical reasons why I'm not going to go into right now. I have some theories as to as to all of you know, the gun ownership statistically itself versus new gun owners getting into the hobby and the, and the hobby becoming a little bit less taboo and, and expanding and people being more interested. We'll go into that in another uh, episode. Um, but, but that is very good to hear. And I'm very happy about that, that Australia, at least, you know, it isn't dying out at all. Like the the gun culture isn't Um, dying out, even though the gun laws have gotten worse. Yeah. It's, there are more increase in shooters. There are more. It is increasing rather than going down. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, more every week we get more and more people getting their license and all that. Um, and yeah, business is getting better. We're selling more stuff. Um, more gun shops are opening up. Um, and yeah, it's it's Pretty improving. Good slowly it's just going to take time um so yeah i'm hopeful at the moment nice nice you know one thing that uh i really want to personally hear about and i'm sure like a lot of people watching this stream uh i don't know so much right now because it's a bit early but you know later on while watching as a video probably pretty interesting to know is uh about you know all the non-compliance that happened in Australia. Now, of course, uh, people who didn't turn their guns in when uh, the government told them to, and you know, and later on, I have uh, seen a lot of info uh, and quite a bit about, for example, like Australian biker gangs going ahead and having their own like you know homemade uh, submachine guns, or stuff yes. like that. Oh, yeah, very interesting you, uh, tell us uh, a bit crime about subculture, that? even yeah, like that that. It- that would be a cool topic to cover right now. If you, if you, if you happen to know anything about it, uh, feel free to share. I know a thing or two. I'm not an expert. Um, so when the laws came in in 96, a lot of people did hand in their guns. Many more did not. Um, there's been so many statistics theorized, thrown around about how many people did hand in firearms and what it is. It varies from 90% of people to 20% of people did. So uh, it's all over the shop. We'll never know for certain. Um, I can tell, I can tell you all this, that Bunnings Warehouse, who is Australia's version of Lowe's Hardware or it's our um, hardware shop, after the laws came in in 1996, PVC pipe, was sold out for six months. You oh my not goodness! Get PVC pipe and end caps hmm. for six months in Australia. Sure makes me think. Yes. So um, <laughs> just think about that. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> yes, yeah. the nogging jogging doesn't. Oh, definitely. Interesting. Yeah, I've seen there's there's been a lot of innovation. Um, I'll call it innovation throughout, and and of course, um, like wow, just uh, 
everywhere you go, no, no matter where you are in the world, uh, of course, some places more than others, you'll see this this massive amount of, of noncompliance, uh, either by who I believe to be still law by maybe just ethical or or your beforehand law abiding yeah, citizens. They're, 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 they're normal. No yeah, they're technically no matter. The state yeah, made them. You know, they didn't really do anything yeah. wrong themselves. Right. Exactly. I mean, and they literally didn't do anything, and yet you know. Now yeah, they're still living out their all lives. Now politicians decided they are now criminal. Right. Exactly, and we all know that. Um, here in the states, uh, there is some massive noncompliance uh, in the Northeast, where uh, there are a ton of states uh, huddled, huddled together that are uh, very anti-gun, uh, generally, or have very anti-gun uh, politicians and, and uh, politics in general. But there are a lot of gun owners. I'm talking millions upon millions of gun owners. And uh, even in my state alone, uh, only in the hundreds of people really turned in. Oh my goodness, of course. I'm getting a call. I'm going to decline that. I'm going to turn my ringtone. Very yeah, of course. Professional. Very professional. professional Very quality. professional. Yeah, I know professional uh, quality of play right here. Just the highest <laughs> levels of professional. Uh, God damn it, Lucas. Commando blog <laughs> That's who we are. It's a very welcoming atmosphere. You gotta have the accidental phone left on I know. high ringtone. Like, you know, take like 20 minutes, you know, from the time that we said we were going to start. Oh yeah, exactly. That too. That that's that's a staple. Mm -hmm. uh, however, just to make a the long best. story short, uh, yeah, like ninety nine percent plus of people uh, were not complying at all with any of this, and uh, they weren't having it. Uh, and the states, like, they really don't know what to do in that instance. They can't go the door to door because they know it, then it's going to cause uh, mass massive unrest. Uh, so they end up just kind of ignoring it a little bit and they just go and they make an attack on charge essentially so like if someone is yeah. pulled over or they like they may have um, like illicit drugs on them or something and they just happen to have that non-safe act compliant gun uh, in their vehicle or maybe in their house during some unrelated uh, but related uh, warrant or, or something search. or random like search yeah like th then then they'll be charged uh, perhaps with it but th there were there were a couple cases where um, the 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 charges alone uh, on those things were, were dropped because they either had a good lawyer or they couldn't really, the, the public opinion was not with the, the state or with Cuomo who passed the law basically overnight. So, so I imagine it is like that, that in, in other places um, and so in, in some others, maybe they will charge to the full extent, uh, but they're, it's it's not possible to enforce a lot of the time uh, or at all in, in many cases. So, you know, that aside, um, we did talk a lot about laws and, and, and stuff here. Um, uh, what else did we want to cover in terms of topics? Uh, went briefly over some of the culture aspects. Uh, I want to talk about, like, shooting sports in Australia. Right. Uh, I'm curious. So how's the, um, how's the shooting you know, sports, uh, I don't know if I want to say market or like the, the scene segment in Australia. Yeah. So the main scenes are a lot of um, Olympic style shooting. So your clays, all, all of the clay disciplines are very um, popular. IPSC for pistols are very popular. Um, cowboy action, very popular. Um, oh, obviously F class fly bench rest shooting. Um, we're seeing a rise of PRS style stuff come to prominence. Um, yeah, basically is if it's not semi-automatic, it's pretty popular in Australia. Oh, another thing that like, I feel is very important that sort of like slipped us is, um, how many, like, how many actual like gun owners are there in Australia? That's hard to say. Um, I or like think, a rough after, more or less. I think the Sporting Shooters Association of Australia, who are one of the larger clubs, I think they have around two hundred thousand members, Holy and that's just one cow. club. Um, wow. wow, they are the biggest club, so reminder. And so, yeah, the trouble is that 
the government doesn't even know how many firearms owners there are because recently South Australia has asked all firearms owners to self-audit their, their um, firearms collections. So the South huh. Australian government doesn't really even know what the people of South Australia have, which is fantastic. Wow, that is fantastic. Yes. And you have to remember, like, our guns are registered and everything, you know, that there's a registry for all of it, you know. That right. It's, it's all on paper, and South Australia has still fucked this up, and I can't imagine that they're the only state. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Hmm. Was there uh, anything that, uh, Shoka, was there anything that you wanted to talk about uh, particularly that you wanted to um, perhaps let people know on the podcast? Most of our viewers, of course, are, are North America, like U.S. Uh, anything that you don't think they would know about that you think is an interesting fact or, or any anything you want to expand upon, go right ahead. This is your time to do so. Okay, I'm about to trigger a bunch of American historical <laughs> collectors. Oh, boy. Sporterized Lee Enfields have value. <laughs> oh, 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 you. <laughs> and I, I, right. I love Mel Serp and I, and I <sighs> okay. felt that. Okay, I'm, I'm about to give a bit of historical lesson to to you Americans. So, um, uh, during even during World War II and the in-between world period, sporterizing Lee Enfields were a thing. They were the most common gun in Australia at the time, and especially for the World War I veterans after the war, when you need a hunting rifle or anything, you went with old reliable. It got you through World War I. It's good enough to shoot ruse. And what I will put in the chat um, is a picture of an Australian soldier in World War II uh, in Papua New Guinea. This picture was taken in August 1942. This man was a roo shooter in civilian life, and he is fighting the Japanese with a sporterized Leonfield. So sporterized Leonfields have historical precedence not all but some um, and then we can get into the fun realm of 303 wildcats um so well, that, that's that, just... that i want to go ahead that i'm in i'm yeah, a bit of a that's... sucker for wildcats especially you know telling me like 303 yes this is now entering into high Australian weaponized autism. So buckle up. Um, Good. This is what I want. After two world wars, you can imagine that Australia has a metric shit ton of Lee Enfields. Um, we obviously had our own arms factory, being Lithgow Arms and a couple of other arsenals that were making parts, if not whole guns, um, for 303s. So we had a few laying around. So when the war's over and all of a sudden we don't need millions of 303s, um, most of them were sold off. Uh, the trouble arises when you want to teach the kids, the wife wants to shoot and all that, and Mark 7 balls a bit too much for them. So caliber conversion started to pop out, built on the 303 case. Um, the smallest of which is 30322. So that is a 303 shell casing neck down to 22 cal. And that was basically the 22250 of its day um, for Australia. Yeah, before. I can bet that is pretty fucking fast. Yes. And a lot of these, and the one that I own, was built off the um, 22 trainers that the cadets had. So all they did is use the normal rim fire barrel, but ran a 30322 reamer um, in the chamber. So you can only shoot the lighter projectiles. 45 grainers are generally going to be your cap. Um, so 45 grains of lead and copper backed by 
a full ch- charge of cordite. Yeah, she she's screaming. What's the speed on that? Yes, very fast. Um, yes. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you'd probably be looking in the upper threes. Oh, yeah, for sure. Upper 3,000 yeah, feet definitely faster than 556. Five, yeah, you can... Um, yeah, it's by no means 22,250 nowadays, but for the day, you know, she, she's going. Um, I mean, 303. 303 is like a fairly... I don't think a lot of people realize that that's a fairly big cartridge, right? Yeah, it's a fairly like, stout You're pace. making that down to like 22. Yeah. Um, and Game then, somewhere. yeah, and that was the favorite for teaching the kids doing small game. So if you needed to shoot foxes, rabbits, all of that stuff, the 22 is the pick. Um, it doesn't Got to go through detonate. some level three steel plates. It'd do it. I'll have to give that a go Not one that day. speed, it'd do it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So no, yeah. we we don't, oh, oh, we are here at TKV. Don't uh, don't recommend that you go ahead and start shooting level three plates ops, uh, unless it's self defense. <laughs> then it's okay. Yeah, if if it's if it's on a target in in a in a controlled environment, uh, like I was watching the other you know, day, there's like testing in a Chinese body armor situation. Yeah, if I'm in a, a self defense <laughs> situation with my three three twenty two in Minecraft. Yeah, in Minecraft, and gotta. <laughs> yeah, s- speaking gotta of which, uh, speaking of which, and and <clears throat> not to not to throw you off, but I guess the next thing we can go into is um, uh, self defense. If there is self defense, like what you're allowed oh, to do. Oh, that is very important. Um, yep. But yeah, go ahead and, and finish this off if you if you want. Okay, I'll quickly rattle off the other ones. Oh, no um, worries. The the next one is three hundred three two seventy. Same thing. It's a 303 shell casing neck down to 270. Um, this was predominantly used for your larger game. Pigs, deer, anything you'd use a normal 270 Winchester on, you'd use a 303 270. And then, I didn't know the word deer in Australia. Yes, the British decided it would be fun to bring them over and royally fuck the country. Oh. Um, so thank you, England. Very cool. Um, and then you have the most popular one, the one that everyone loves, 30325. So again, it's a 303 shell casing, neck down to 25. Um, this is by far the most prominent. This is the one that everyone knows. Um, predominantly it uses an 87 grain projectile, um, and you're generally going to be pushing j- that just under 3,000 feet per second. Um, and yes, that's that's a very light recoiling, heavy hitting round. Um, I know in the that's, States, that's 25 cool. cal. BD. Yeah, I know in the States, 25 cal is kind of dying because of the six and a halfs are becoming so prominent now and they're doing basically everything. Um, but yeah, 25 cal is, it's a very good caliber. Um, and yeah, just throw a 325. Well, that's 25 fantastic. caliber is, like, isn't it? Like on millimeter? No. Um, 25 cal is 257, six and a half is 264. So All right. close, but different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then all the other countries in the empire, they had their own twists on this. Um, South Africa had six millimeter Musgrave, which is a 303 um, shell casing neck down to 243. Um, in Canada, they had a gunsmith called Epps, and he was basically the Ackley of 303 cartridges. So he liked to play around with shoulder angles, blowing the cases out to give it less of a taper, more case capacity, blah, 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 all that really nerdy reloading stuff. Um, and, yeah, every country in the empire had its own different things post-war. You got, you got me wanting to go ahead and get my for myself. Oh, that sounds really, really cool. 
Man, 30325 is the one to get, and I will say this. If you ever get yourself a sporterized 303, 25 cal barrels are available, and Pacific Tool and Gauge do have reamers for it. So get out there, make one. Based. Get out there and let and don't let your memes be through. <laughs> I mean, there is no greater meme than shooting an emu in the face with a 30325. <laughs> yeah, I Never know you forget. guys are not in a, <clears throat> the best, best way to put it in that. Oh, pest control. All good. Yeah, yeah, you're not in the best type of, like, uh, mood with those, uh, <clears throat> with the emus. Oh, the, yeah, it's funny how everyone, PTSD like... relating to the war, but... <laughs> everyone just half forgets, like, what the actual war was. It's just like, oh, yeah, we stopped caring once the funny stuff is over. Right, right. Uh, nobody, nobody remembers, like, after the fact, when they brought in the World War One veterans who knew how to use machine guns, and it just turned into an emu slaughter. That's the funniest part. Yeah, I'm just saying, okay, I think I know <laughs> why, you know, the, those, like, nuclear tests you were doing on emu land? I don't think I, I, don't, think I don't see what you guys were doing, Australia. Oh, yeah, what was it, emu, emu Island? To kill the kaiju, kaiju. That's great. It's a little <laughs> tidbit there that I didn't know about, uh, the, uh, the emu slaughter after the fact. Oh, boy. Yeah, um, what happened was... Um, the farmers were screaming out saying, oi, emu plague, emu plague. Um, and the Australian government wanted to train the current serving um, military guys on the Vickers machine guns. Um, and they just didn't have the training necessary. They didn't have the skills. Um, and then that's what you know as the emu war. After the failure of the current serving military guys, um, the Australian government allowed World War I veterans who knew a thing, knew a thing or two about mowing mm -hmm. down a shit ton of people with Vickers guns, um, time with the MGs to murder all the emus. And turns out Germans and emus are very similar. Oh, who would have thought? Yeah. Who would have thunk? Uh, the bigger the Vickers gun is actually a good one. Yep, Vickers, Lewis guns. That, they all know how to do that part. Beautiful. And I guess we'll segue that into the uh, self-defense portion. Uh, yeah, I know very little. Situation. A uh, pack of yeah. rabbit emus is coming towards <laughs> you. Are you allowed to have your weapon on you and like use that weapon against the emus? This is where Rabbit it gets into a, wild emus. into a weird grey area. Legally speaking, you are not allowed to defend yourself with a firearm. Um, you must eat, meet with equal force. If they have a gun, you can meet with a gun. If they have a knife and you meet with a gun, then that's classed as manslaughter or murder because you're overdoing it. Oh. But in saying that... Out of all the times that firearms have been used in self-defense, only one person has been charged with murder, and that is because that person shot the other person in the back. Right. And would you say that was the only person charged, the only person convicted of murder, would you Sorry, say? Sorry, convict, convicted. Right. Just wanted to, get, just wanted to fix it, just in case. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Even then, most of the time, an investigation does happen, but the charges are dropped before it gets to a conviction. Uh, before they get even charged. Right, understand. So they'll look so into the legal it. precedent <clears throat> is like, you know, most cases just end up getting dropped. In actual cases, yes. you know, of self-defense by utilizing a weapon. But it is Ill technically illegal according to the law. Right. Yes, and it's a case-by-case -case base. Um, of course, also probably based yeah. possibly on the province or state as well, or city, I'd imagine, or, or no? Yes and no. Um... Funnily enough, a firearm hasn't been used in self-defense for a while. At least nothing that I can think of. Um, and, yeah, it's it's just a bit of an oddity when it does happen. and It does make the morning news. Right. And, and I imagine um, uh, the only instances that, that uh, would come to mind uh, would involve, like, a home intruder situation on, like, property yes, or yeah. or maybe from a vehicle perhaps but you wouldn't see like someone walking around say 
uh, with a concealed handgun at all. It, that's not a thing, yeah, right? Un unfortunately, concealed carry isn't really a thing. Um, in Queensland, it is a thing if you are transporting more than $100,000 worth of goods. Oh, boy. Um, then concealed carry can become a thing, but that's only when you've got $100,000 worth of shit on you. Gotcha. And it um, isn't even in like an off-duty police officer type thing either? Or like, I mean, I'm um, not sure if you know or not. Off-duty but... police officers can't do it. Um, if they are in plain clothes, then yes, I will say this. Plain clothes police officers need training on how not to print. Oh. Um, the, the, and they need... Oof. Not full size Glocks. Um, the amount of times I've seen plain clothes, and I'm just like, they have a grip protruding out of their hip. <laughs> yeah. It's so, like, buddy, I mean, you may want to not make it as obvious. I'm just like, do, do I need you? Do I need to provide you a link to our friends at T Rex Arms? <laughs> uh, Lucas, please send me free. Make shit. sure to use TKB code, like TKB twenty twenty for a fifteen percent. Oh, I'm just fucking. Uh, we don't have any discount code, sadly. Maybe we'll. Maybe like, I'll. Every time I, every time no, I see a police day. officer printing, I want to walk up to them like I'm um in a grand thumb video. I'm just like, if you've ever been caught printing while you've been in plain plain clothes. Go ahead and hit that subscribe <laughs> button. <laughs> oh, that's great. But yes, Australian police officers definitely need a course on concealed carry when they're in plain clothes. Now, how often does it happen that people, because this is a thing that happens in a few countries. I know it happens like fairly freaking in, uh, in Canada, and, and I've, I've seen it fuckloads of time in South America. And which is like, you know, people, despite it being illegal, like caring regardless. It's yes and no. Um, I'm sure it happens, but not many right, people. Right, but it's not a common more. occurrence. Right. It, it, I bet no. it, it, it lends itself on certain things, such as uh, how, how maybe those people feel necessity versus the penalties of doing such versus yeah. the there are so many factors i imagine go into that yeah it's not a commonplace thing by any means um and i honestly cannot remember the last time someone's been done for concealed carrying um so either yeah, they're um, really good at concealed carrying or it doesn't... Yeah, either they're, either they're really good or no one's doing it. Or right. the people and I'm... are doing it are really good at doing it. Yeah, I'm sure if, if of course, they don't have uh, certain nefarious uh, intent in mind, um, uh, like, let's say, you know, they, they do, say, respond to something in public that, let's say, in theory, necessitates such force, uh, I'm sure what's going through their head is, wow, I'm going to be the test case uh for this um and i, know, I might go right. away forever i don't know it's it's just weird to think about it, it's either you're going to become an australian hero or you are going to jail for a very long time fame or infamy or you're fleeing the scene because you do not want to <laughs> deal with the law on that oh boy oh boy all these it's theoreticals rock up to the scene <laughs> you're in mag dump always. run <laughs> run yeah you know yeah. that is actually what happened in south america it's like uh, Okay, if if you're caring and like you actually have to use your weapon, it's just like, all right, well, see ya. I'm not dealing yeah. with the aftermath of this. Yeah, g uh, genuinely, in 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 all seriousness, um, and just for those watching that we're not like being super serious, uh, like if if you're in a situation like that anywhere in the world, uh, definitely the the one of the main things you want to have is some form of first aid training, uh, possibly even carry a tourniquet on you first aid kit like if it's not impacting your your daily carry it is definitely one of the first things you'd want in any emergency situation uh is is first aid um and of course to keep yourself safe and run away maybe help yeah, others if like it necessitates it but PSA. yeah just a psa it is more likely that you will be needed to plug holes rather than make holes right not saying the situation again, will never arise about shooting, but we're right? going off statistics of course, of yep. course. It's just like, you, you can fall down, you can have a number of things happen to you. Or like, because I'll be dead honest with you guys, I, I had to use fucking a first aid kit way more times than I had to use a gun. Yep. You know, and in terms of like, you know, like, quote unquote emergencies, right? 
It's yeah, great to have it's both. Not even but yeah. shooting or violence related, like just think yeah, of a exactly. car accident happens nearby. Mm-hmm. You know, definitely, people definitely. hit their heads, break their arms. Shit happens in life. And the same thing could happen to you. You may have, like cut yourself by accident. You may have like had it, like been in a part of a you know a car accident, or a bike accident, or whatever. And it's like those are situations where having a first aid kit might literally make a difference in you dying or not. Just as much as like having a pistol could make a difference all in a different scenario. Right, and even on a, you know a tangent there. Uh, except from that like thinking about australia when when us americans generally think about australia if it isn't about the 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 gun law situation we always think about oh dangerous animals and insects and you know the outback being so large it just like it it seems like the perfect country for danger and for adventure and all that so it's like you'd imagine that you'd want people to be trained to help you in case you're in a dire situation or you need help or you're like first aid right yeah what it's yes and no. Um, if if you go out there, like, yes, you definitely need to know a thing or two not to get yourself into trouble. Um, but when you live in, like, built-up population areas, you know. Right, of course. It's kind of just like, you know, well, living in the suburbs, you know. Um, there, there have been a few cas- occasions where I'm just like, oh, shit, there's a red belly black, black snake there. Okay, now we just walk away and don't fuck with it. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's very rare for it to happen in built-up suburbs. If you're out in the outback, yes, definitely, you need to know your shit. But when you're in suburbia, not so much. Right, of course. Same as anywhere else, of course, like suburbia, yeah. urban setting, has its own dangers and safeties as anywhere else, yeah. of course. You know, but... But I just think it's so funny that, uh, for, I don't know how long it goes back, but for so many years, that's just what us or other countries think uh, when we think of Australia, yeah. of course. It's the, 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 the classic mean, stereotype, yeah. There are very few countries in the world where it's like, how, I can't think of any, where like carrying a first aid kit is illegal. And just like, just looking at statistics, you're way more likely to be using a first aid kit than to actually be using a gun. So yeah, another really important thing for like, yeah, for sure. I mean, concealed carry, if you will, when a concealed carry like an IFAC. Definitely. I mean, uh, like body armor can be controlled in some places, of course, for for uh, whatever body reason. Body armor controlled in Australia. Oh yeah, yeah. Hmm. All right. What else didn't we cover? I think we might have uh, covered everything we needed to. All right, yeah, we can we can close up a bit. Uh, if there is anybody, How long have we been this going for? uh a little like an hour and twenty minutes. It's a, kind of our average. That's that's kind of how we uh, how long we go normally, I suppose. But if you if you have anything else you want to talk about or say or anything we forgot about, uh, we do have a few minutes uh, to to start back another uh, topic if we want to. Um, I'm, I'm sure the, the, the longest we'd go is is like an hour and a half, two hours at most. But um, but yeah, if there's anybody in the in the comments that happens to be or the, the chat that happens to be watching uh, at this early hour. Uh, uh, feel free to yeah, send in questions. questions. Yeah, yeah, questions. or Yes, please ask. Also, I'll just do a quick plug. Yeah, go right ahead. I am on Instagram. It's the... Um, what the fuck is my Instagram? Sorry, it's nearly 2 <laughs> o'clock in the morning here. I had to work it's today. Okay. It has been a very long day for me, so my brain's not exactly working. That's why I'm stuttering and sounding like an autistic twat. Oh, no, you sound uh, great. It's all right, buddy. You're sounding great. You're good. <laughs> uh, okay, so it's Aussie Gunshot Commando. Commando spelt with a K because, of course, um, good, good. on Instagram, all one word. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to message me. I'll try and answer the best I can. Nobody, absolutely nobody, is an expert in Australian gun laws because it is such a fucking clusterfuck. So I will try and answer the best I can if you guys have a question or anything like that. Um, and please give me a follow. I want to be a influencer and live off that sweet influencer money. <laughs> um, so yes, I want to be no a. Goal. I want to be the first Aussie gun bunny, even though I am a hideous male. <laughs> well, Very know, well said. Gotta put on yeah. the programmer socks and just get to work. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. 
<laughs> and don't worry, we'll actually, once the video is live, uh, you know, if you're watching this later and not right now that it's live, uh, you can check out down in the description. We're going to have a link to the Instagram. And yeah, we can just he... click on it and go to it. Yeah, absolutely. On screen or in the in the chat there we'll, we'll put it, we'll put it somewhere it'll go somewhere people will see it it's gonna be at least for sure in the description so go check that down over there yeah and give it a friendship. click um <laughs> friendship. and friendship friendship never ends um i suppose the only other thing i could really talk about is uh what guns i've actually got Oh yeah, for um, sure. Sure. Talk I wasn't sure if it was something you were comfortable talking about, but that's awesome. No, no, no not full send, man. Um, so I fucking despise shotguns. Make sure to talk about the really legal ones too, okay? Oh, yes, the really <laughs> legal ones. Okay, so no SKS is no like SKKs uh, full auto in Minecraft. Your XM one thirty fours and like RPGs. <laughs> um, so I'm a bit of a history fan couldn't fucking tell um so i've got a in perfect mint condition um 1942 december 1942 lithgow uh, made smle um, number one mark three star i've also nice. got a um m91 mosin and garn that was rebuilt by the Finns, but still has czar's nicholas ii's imperial eagle on it so that's kind of neat oh that's an um, imperial nugget yes um, back Fun when fact nuggets... about those, by the way, that uh, I just wanted to know because I, I see like very few people talk about it. You're supposed to shoot those, like with like, yes. using the original ammo. You're yes. supposed to shoot it with the bayonet out. But I, I see like basically no one do that. Like, yes, those were actually a... sighted in that one. Yes, it's a bit hard in Australia because the gun ranges don't like you having bayonets fixed. Um, it's bad optics. Um, <laughs> another reason why I hate gun ranges. Fuck you, let me have fun. That's why I shoot. Let me have fun. Please. Um, then, I've got a, then I've got a 1917 um, Eddystone. Um, oh, that's sweet. 3006, exactly normal mil spec. That covers my mil serp guns. Then I've got the collection of 303 Wildcats, which you can all feel free to call me a fud bubba over. I don't give a fuck. Um, and the 22, the 25, and the 270. Um, then we move into the modern guns. Uh, I've got a Zestava 22. Um, just a little bolt action. You guys in the States would know it as the Remington Model 5, I think. Oh. Um, Remington did a copy of the Zestava 22 a few years back. Um, and then I have a Remington 700 223, um, which I'm building up to be a long range 223 project gun. So I can basically do clone reloads of mod 262. Sorry, Mark 262 mod one. And yeah, that's, that's it. And then we get into my handguns where I've got a um, 1873 single action army. Um, seven and a half inch barrel, three fifty seven. Um, Yeehaw! And I, I purely bought that so I could be the Arizona Ranger with the big iron on my hip. <laughs> I love it. Um, and then there's the gun that all of my friends hate me for. I have a CZ seventy five B, which I am doing it doing up to be as close as an Australian man can get to having. Rally's gun from Gunsmith Cats. Oh my goodness, that is. Even though, she, even though she had a short rail and my one Correct. is a long rail, I don't care. It's still a CZ seventy five. That's it. You're my favorite person In your ever. Heart, it's okay. <laughs> we we, we yeah, got a rally lover over here. On like, uh, yes, you, rally you is like, best. You know, the Gunsmith Cats like remake or something like that, right, Don? Oh yeah, uh, I. Everyone already probably knows a little bit about already, but I did um, I help with. Didn't know. Oh yeah, no, I, I helped a little bit with the production on the Blu-ray that just came out uh, about a year, a year and a half ago. <laughs> <laughs> Hyperventilating, <laughs> <laughs> heavy breathing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I guess like off podcast, we could, or even another podcast, we could do like a Gunsmith Cats podcast and have you back on possibly. Well, we'll figure something out. Like that'd be absolutely. fun to talk about. Absolutely. 
Uh, anyway, go right ahead. Guys, next weekend we'll be back here, same time. <laughs> it's going to be two hours of talking about CZ75. Oh, boy. Um, Not. Let's go. Czech Republic <laughs> Might podcast. actually happen. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it does spiritually hurt me that the two best gun animes that are out there will, will never get their second seasons, and that is High School of the Dead and Gunsmith Cats. Oh, absolutely. I actually really loved it. As, as campy as it was and as some, some funny, you know, as we know it, it, it just, oh, I, I loved it. I read the manga as well. Uh, and I'm, it's really it sad that the the creator uh, either I think he passed away in a tsunami or something yeah. an earthquake. It's been oh, like man. nine years so since tragic. He passed away. Yeah. And I will inform everyone there is only two legitimately good reasons to own an M1A: either to do a Black Hawk down build or to do a High School Dead build. I wholeheartedly that, agree. Fuck you. The M14 is a lousy service rifle, and you should have adopted the. <laughs> Or the AM2. This oh, is the best. No, the Australian shit posting is is off the charts. Words. I love it. Okay. Well, look, those are fine words. 280 I am looking, okay, at the world's finest battle rifle, the FAL. Like, <laughs> damn right. The uh, FAL I is wish I was a blue like job field. up in the sky. Do, 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 do. Uh, Oh god, now we're getting oh, to Rhodesia. so we got like Rhodesia, we, we already had Rhodesia, we had anime weep shit, we talked about like, Ooh. you know, our obsessive firearms behaviors, uh, I, I think this is a good TKP stream, honestly. Absolutely. Yes, and I would like to inform everyone that Australia does have a large population of South Africans and Rhodians, and they are still continuing on their firearm traditions, just with a lot less SLRs and fouls. Oh yes. Yes, well, and I'm sure they got a couple or a couple hidden copies. ones just in case. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, I think that is a great way to end the stream. Uh, Stroka, thank you so much uh, for coming on um, this late at night for you, this early for us, uh, and making this an awesome stream. I, I really didn't know where it would go. I, I was I was kind of nervous because I, I woke up and was like, oh my goodness, I almost forgot about the podcast. But uh, it all worked out in the end. Uh, it flowed very well. You were an awesome guest. Uh, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. I just hope the audience likes, likes this because I have a crippling fear that I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to go on K and everyone's just like, get a load of this faggot. He's such a piece of shit. Why did they have him on? Hey, um, bad, bad publicity so, is good publicity. <laughs> now that I've said that, I know what's going to happen. So, hello, Dude, it's Kay. Okay. And... You popped your podcast, Cherry. It's okay. It was a good podcast. So, uh, I'll just say 